BC7 Extra. Welcome to ABC7 Extra. Good evening. I'm your host, Dylan McKim. For the next half hour, we are going over the case to remove District Attorney Yvonne Rosales. This all started back on August 24th. At that time, El Paso Attorney Omar Carmona filed a petition to remove Rosales from her position. Let's give you a little background on the law. Under Chapter 87 of the Texas Code, any citizen can file a petition to remove an elected official from office. There are three general grounds for dismissal. Incompetency, official misconduct, and intoxication on, on or off duty caused by drinking an alcoholic beverage. Carmona has cited incompetency and official misconduct as his reasons for removing D.A. Rosales. In his filing, he mentions the handling of the Walmart shooter case and a capital murder case that was dismissed because of prosecutorial vindictiveness. The D.A. responded to the petition, denying all allegations made against her. She also took issue with the petition itself, saying it was an attack on democracy and would erase the results in an election she won and that El Pasoans voted for. A visiting judge, Tryon D. Lewis, was appointed to the case. On September 14th, he granted Carmona's motion to cite Rosales. Under law, County Attorney Joanne Bernal would represent the state in a jury trial against Rosales. After Lewis cited Rosales, it was up to Bernal to decide whether or not the state would prosecute the case and take it to a jury trial. On November 1st, Bernal made the decision to prosecute the case, and it's now going to a jury trial. Judge Lewis set the trial start date in March of 2023. On Thursday this week was the scheduling hearing, but nothing happened. Both parties said they were not prepared for the hearing, and an agreement was made to move the scheduling hearing back to December 7th. Joining me now is the man who filed a petition to remove Rosales, Omar Carmona, and next to him is retired jail magistrate Judge Penny Hamilton. Thank you both for being here. Thanks for having us. Omar, I want to start with you. Did you ever think when you filed this petition all the way back in late August that it would get to a jury trial? I knew when I filed back in late August I had grounds for her removal. I, 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 I felt that way the morning of August 24th, and it is, uh, it, we're in November, and I feel the same way, but even more so than I did. Um, when I alleged incompetency, uh, you know, I, I thought there was plenty of that. Uh, to make an argument on and then you know it, it went into unethical behavior and based on the the recent uh, allegations based on the uh, Justin Underwood report uh, we are now talking about criminal behavior so yes I, I still believe that th it is necessary for this petition to move forward and that Ms. Rosales be removed from office these are very rare to happen you talk to ex you talk to experts they say oh, anyone can file a petition to remove but it's very rare that they're accepted and actually go to a jury trial in your recollection have you ever heard of anything and judge hamilton i ask you too in your recollection have you ever heard of anything like this happening in el paso county where an official was taken to jury trial it, not in el paso county have you mr Carmona? no, no I, i've no. never heard of this in el paso county very rare right there there's been a lot of discussion about this petition the da denied your allegation mr carmona they said you didn't provide enough proof has your mind changed on anything from your original petition not not one bit um uh, this has been a very uh, uh, trying uh, couple months, uh, but uh, most important, it's been, it's been very trying on the community. Um, the bottom line is even with this petition and a trial date set, Ms. Rosales is still the district attorney uh, in El Paso County. Um, so I am still very much concerned uh, for our criminal justice system. I am a practicing lawyer. I handle lots of criminal defense cases, my, myself and my partners at CLM do. And we are seeing uh, the effect it has on our clients and their families, uh, the way these cases have been mishandled um, at, at the outset. So uh, again, this, this petition is necessary to move forward uh, because of the, the dismissal and the mishandling of these cases. And Judge Hamilton, I want to talk about the hundreds of dismissed criminal cases happening under the DA's watch. These are cases that have reached that 180 days since the arrest that have not had any charges brought against the defendants. In your experience as a magistrate judge, is this at all normal? Oh, not, no, not, not at all. Not only is it not normal, I, I should make a, one correction in okay. the statement. The cases weren't actually dismissed because they never were filed in the first place. Okay. And, and, and you know, therein is, is the, the crux of the problem, if you will, and a lot of, I know what Mr. Carmona was talking about in his petition, it is just a flat out failure on the DA's office to act on these cases, period. There's a, a responsibility 
uh, for the district attorney when somebody is arrested um, to move forward with the case within certain time frames. Um, and if they do, if the district attorney doesn't, the person either needs to be released from jail or they need to be released from their bond conditions. Mm -hmm. This is where it's so important that there is an effect on the uh, on the community because you have like somebody who is uh, on bond for a family violence uh, assault, for example, and they have a condition where they're not supposed to possess any weapons, they're not supposed to have any contact with the alleged victim in the case, mm -hmm. and all those conditions are gone because these cases weren't acted on in the time that is prescribed by law. Did COVID have any impact here? I mean, when she came into office, of course, the courts were closed down. Uh, they could not have in-person trials, but does COVID have any impact on these dismissed cases? And you say they're not dismissed because they were never filed. No, no absolutely. I'm, I'm sorry, but no, absolutely not. Let me, you know, let me tell you, COVID had an impact on, on our world mm -hmm. and certainly, you know, in El Paso County. But what COVID did was it, it stopped the jury trials from happening because we couldn't have people congregate together and there wasn't a safe way to do it. Mm -hmm. So the Council of Judges, you know, worked out with Dr. Ocaranza, you know, the health director to, uh, you know, figure out a safe way to be able to still have criminal justice business move forward and yet and, and try to take care of people's rights but by the same token, mm -hmm. make sure that everybody was safe. So it was determined having jury trials and having that close contact wasn't an advisable thing. It was something that unfortunately, everybody that had a criminal case or trial um, ended up you know, having to wait for that. But that means all the prosecutors were free to be able to mm -hmm. deal with the cases that they had already or the cases that were coming in. Business didn't stop. Uh, by business, I mean people still committed crimes, they still got arrested, they still went to jail, and so new cases happened all the time. So all of these assistant DAs had all the time in the world to work on these cases and to screen them and to not be in the position that they're in right now with thousands and thousands of cases behind the, that haven't been touched. Well, there's also an issue with communication between the DA's office and the public defender's office. The lead public defender, Kelly Childress, has been saying that the DA's office won't even let her office know when a case has been declined by the DA. There was a moment uh, during one of these dismissal hearings in the referral court when Judge Acosta, a magistrate judge, asked the head of the intake department at the DA why they could not just send an email to the public defender's office notifying them, hey, this case, we've declined it, take it out of your system. What's your reaction to that process, Judge Hamilton? I, I think it's, it's uh, unconscionable. I, I can't understand why um, the DA's office wouldn't communicate uh, and, and uh, it, you know, let the public defender's office know what was going on. Mm -hmm. Not just because this issue had come to light and there were so many cases that were having to be, uh, the individuals were having to be released, but it's the courteous thing to do. You know, we do have a, a system, an adversarial system in the criminal justice process where you have the defense and you have the prosecutors, but you know, by and large, our legal community, are, are, they're courteous with each other. And even though they may be on opposite sides, you know, you don't treat people with disrespect the way that the mm -hmm. district attorney has treated um, not only, I think, the public defender's office, Mr. Carmona, I'm sure, as I, I've heard from some of his associates uh, in his law firm and other people when I was still um, as, uh, as the presiding judge of the jail magistrate court that they couldn't even get people to answer the phone at the DA's office. Is that true, Mr. Carmona? That, that, that was true, and I, I, can, I can show you I mean, just my sent emails during that time, and, and, and Judge Hamilton is correct. You know, yes, there was a backlog of jury trials, but given that we couldn't try cases, that means these prosecutors, rather than focus on preparing for jury trials, because that takes a lot of time too, but if, if you don't have to do this, then cases should be screened, and, 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 and resolutions, deals, recommendations, plea offers, that, that ended too, and there, that is inexcusable. So we can't, we can't blame COVID for that. And so, yes, I mean, you could, I mean, my email, I, I was sending several emails a day, no response, no response. I was leaving voicemails that were not being uh, returned. Um, and, and all this, you know, I'm having clients say, what's going on with my case? You know, what, what, what can we do? And I don't have answers for, I didn't have answers for a lot of these clients. And that's when I started seeing, this is a big problem. This is a systemic problem and, and, and something has to be done.
I'm curious to know, Mr. Carmona, in her entire administration, is there anything you can point to that you think she's done a good job at? You know, I, I did appreciate that when she came in, that, you know, she reviewed the pretrial diversion program. Uh, some changes were made uh, that I thought were necessary. Um, so, you know, that that gave me some hope. Mm -hmm. um, but I did a problem from the very get go was just very understaffed. And and if, if, if we're that understaffed, the wheels of justice are going to be very slow. And I think just so many things caught up to them. And because of them being so understaffed in this huge backlog of cases in the in the screening intake department, then we had trial lawyers being very careless with the cases that were already pending, uh, which then brings us to the Gabaldon case, mm -hmm. uh, which is what myself and uh, my co-counsel, uh, Denise Butterworth, pointed out. Basically, they have these major cases and nothing is being done on them. I mean, nothing. Witnesses aren't being um, uh, uh, dealt with or, or, or prepared. Uh, you know, statements are not being turned over to the defense. Evidence is not being tested to be turned over to the defense. And, and so when the judge is looking at the defense bar saying, hey, well, what are you doing with your case? You know, well, don't, why should I have to do something if the state hasn't turned over everything yeah. to me? And so then, th then we get into other cases that were pending and how uh, those were affected. Under law, now that we're un going to a trial, she can be suspended by Judge Lewis pending the trial, and Judge Lewis would be responsible for naming an interim DA. This question's for both of you. I'll start with you, Judge Hamilton. Should she be suspended while we wait for this trial? Yes. Can you give a reason why? Because the situation has become so dire that I believe that, uh, number one, um, I, I, I think that the everything that it, that Mr. Carmona put in the pleadings is legitimate. I think it's sustainable. I think the evidence is there. And I don't want to see our community harmed any further um, because the job's just not getting done. Mr. And so I, I think it, it should be soon. Mr. Carmona, same question to you. Ditto. I, I can't say it any better. Um, with her in office, Ms. Rosales in office, and the administration that she put in there, um, things have been mishandled and things are continued. Uh, it's, we're in the same situation. Tonight, when we all go to sleep as a community tonight, we have the same district attorney and, and it's the same incompetence. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's why it needs to be, yes, sooner rather than later. We'll take a quick break. You're watching ABC 7 Extra. Still ahead, we want to explore the arguments on the other side of this issue who Yvonne Rosales, or who are saying Yvonne Rosales is doing a good job. Stay with us. At Dig Poe's Huge Service Center, we have what you are looking for. Express Lane Quick Loop Service, certified technicians. Great prices, great vehicles, great service. Take a look at our current service specials on our website, digpododge.com. Do you know anyone who has seizures? Advanced Neurology Epilepsy and Sleep Center is the only certified epilepsy center in a 250 mile radius that offers the most accurate cutting edge technology necessary to diagnose these symptoms. We are led by Dr. Amar Harakar and his practitioners and they will care for you in a comfortable and professional environment. If you or a loved one is suffering from seizures, please call Advanced Neurology Epilepsy and Sleep Center today. You deserve to live a normal life. Call now. You know, one of the biggest fears that we see from so many folks is, have we done a good enough job financially as we go on through the retirement years? I think retirement should look like, it should look like uh, uh, every day being a Saturday. We want to have freedom to go do the things that we can do. And we're going to help you understand the tools that will help you accomplish what you want to accomplish. What I get out of that is such an incredible fulfillment of being able to help you get to where you want to be. Feet hurt. Foot ulcers and amputations are a major cause of morbidity, disability, as well as emotional and physical costs for people with diabetes. We believe that prompt diagnosis, early intervention, and prevention are essential to prevent or delay the onset of adverse outcomes. If you are diabetic, you should be seeing a podiatrist. Same day or next day appointments. Save yourself some steps. Book online today at thefootinstitute.com. At Dick Bow Dodge Ram Parts Center, we have what you are looking for. Over $1 million in parts. Mopar accessories for your new ride. Order your parts online. Check out our current parts specials on our website, dickbowdodge.com.
Welcome back. When setting up this show for this week, we did reach out to a spokesman for the DA's office to request either Ms. Rosales or someone else in the office to come on the show. We never heard back. After the petition to remove Yvonne Rosales was filed and media started covering the petition, a new political action committee was started. It's called Truth Matters, and it was started by former El Paso Mayor John Cook. Cook said in an early post on the Facebook page, quote, When I saw what was happening to our district attorney, I felt compelled to do something that would allow El Pasoans to know the rest of the story, end quote. We reached out to John Cook to have him on the show. Unfortunately, he was tied up with other commitments for Veterans Day and could not make it for the taping of our show on Friday. But his page does provide fact sheets. They're right here. I would like to read them on the air and then have our guests respond. The first fact sheet is talking about the competence of the district attorney, Yvonne Rosales, to prosecute criminal cases. It has a list of bullet points that come down. We're going to put some bullet points up there on the screen for you. Uh, let's start with the first one. Upon taking office in January of 1st, 2021, District Attorney Yvonne Rosales filed an average of 500 cases per month. It then goes on to say a year later, the district attorney's office has increased the number of cases filed to 900 cases per month. They also say that... Uh, in 2019, across Texas, there was an average of 186 civil and criminal jury trials per week. That's according to the Texas Office of Court Administration. And it wasn't until March 5th, 2021, that Texas courts were allowed to hold in-person trials. Uh, Mr. Carmona, I direct this question to you because you have said in your petition that she has uh, displayed incompetency. Does this, is this a good argument they're making here in this fact sheet? It's misleading. And I want to say because on your second point, they're talking again, and it's what Judge Hamilton mentioned earlier uh, on the program, again, we're talking in-person jury trials. Yes, we concede that people were not trying cases, but that doesn't mean that cases stop being filed. And so that was a very misleading point that Mr. Cook was making when he was talking about in-person jury trials. Yes, we are conceding that there was a, a jury trial backlog, but that does not mean that cases stop being filed. And, and again, um, there was concerns from, from my perspective, being a, 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 a criminal defense lawyer in this community, that inexperienced prosecutors were filing these cases. And we had problems uh, 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 with the filing process with those cases that were filed. There were problems. Um, and and there, there was an issue with communication, I believe, uh, among the, uh, the assistant DAs filing these cases. And so I think that was a misleading argument to make. Uh, keep Again, them pointing to in-person jury trials. We're not talking about that. OK, we're talking about cases being filed orderly, timely, correctly. And that was not being done by the DA's office. OK, the second fact sheet, this was uh, this was filed on September 20th, or I should say posted on the Facebook page on September 20th. Uh, this one is concerning or dealing with the significant backlog of cases in El Paso's court system. They're saying that uh, District Attorney Yvonne Rosales inherited a backlog of cases from the previous administration when she took office. They also discuss in here the DIMS process, which is the process for the help with the police when they file or they, they send over cases to the DA's office with evidence and, and uh, they recommend charges sometimes in there. Uh, during the pandemic, or I should say here, it says with the DIMS contract expired and disagreements between the El Paso Police Department and the El Paso Sheriff's Office, the backlog of cases increased further, added to the backlog of cases. It took seven months to negotiate a DIMS agreement that was acceptable to the city and the county. During the DIMS negotiations, criminal cases were held back because DIMS was not available to process the cases. Judge Hamilton, let's go over this fact sheet right here. Let's we'll start with the, uh, the first bullet point there that uh, Yvonne Rosales inherited a backlog of cases from the previous administration. Do you have a response to that? Well, okay, first of all, if, if there were cases that were from 2016 that, that she had, if that was a truthful statement, then there would have been a lot more of those 3201 motions and motions to dismiss because of uh, the statute of limitations, you know, being expired. And so I, I think what that probably is a very misleading statement. And I, I didn't look at all of the factors, but what I can tell you from what I know, and I, I was in uh, I, the DA's office until 2015, okay? And mm -hmm. I can tell you there wasn't a backlog of cases like that. There may be some cases that are a little bit older waiting for jury trial. And, and those cases can date back some years. And, you know, that happens in any jurisdiction, not just El Paso, but um, it, we're not talking about cases that are waiting to be filed or waiting to be screened. There could be some cases that go back that far waiting for a trial date and they have been reset 
for various different reasons over time. But again, it, it sounds like there were a ton of cases that that um, y you know that she had to do something about, and that mm -hmm. is not true. That that's not accurate. I want to go over the Dems argument with you, uh, Judge Hamilton. The, now, Dems, D I M S. Can you explain what that is to our viewers? And uh, this has been used as an argument that the Dems process was down, and that contributed to the backlog of cases. Although. El Paso Police and the Sheriff's Department, they still would send over evidence and information to the DA's office without this process in place. All right, so let me explain. First of all, DIMS is the District Attorney Information Management System, mm -hmm. and it's a process that um, took place. Actually, uh, I was one of the attorneys who did the original research on the DIMS program as an intern mm. back in 1995. <laughs> um, I'd been in the DA's office uh, since then, and, and or actually, um, I started the research in 93 when I was still an intern. I, I started in the DA's office in 95 as a licensed attorney. But it's, it's a rapid screening process is what it's there for. So the officers would contact the on-duty district attorney for cases that didn't need any further investigation. These are cases that, uh, for example, driving while intoxicated where all of the evidence is there, the officer has seen everything happen, it's all happened in that officer's presence, and so they would call, talk to an assistant district attorney, present those facts, then the assistant district attorney would say, yes, I'm going to take the case, then they would present the paperwork, mm -hmm. and the case would get filed within a day or two. So that really basically was the DIMS program in a nutshell. When the DIMS program uh, quit working for whatever reasons, and there were lots of issues uh, between the DA's office and the El Paso Police Department, um, the sh with the Sheriff's Department, the DIMS program continued to work all throughout the time that they say it was down. It never stopped. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that for a fact because as the presiding judge, uh, of the jail magistrate court, everybody that came into the jail that got booked on a DIMS case, I or my uh, uh, judges that were on staff reviewed all of that information. So we were aware of those DIMS cases. Um, the cases would come anyway. It's just that the officers would come to the judge with the information. So the case was still being presented mm -hmm. to the DA's office. So rather than getting it done within a day or two because they were doing it on the phone, they were just not responding to those cases that were being presented anyway. So that's the only thing that, that stopped were the phone calls. But the people still committed crimes. The officers were still presenting cases. People were still getting booked into jail. The DA's office just wasn't doing anything about it. Let's go over fact sheet number three real quick, Mr. Carmona. They say here uh, that the dismissal of cases is not unique. Uh, it's not just unique to El Paso. It's happened in Wisconsin. They're, they're uh, citing a, a, <laughs> a lawsuit that was filed in Wisconsin accusing the state of violating the constitutional rights of thousands of, of criminal defendants who have waited weeks and months for an appointed lawyer. The suit seeks to dismiss the criminal cases with prejudice. They also say in here, many domestic violence cases are dismissed because the aggrieved party drops the charges. Do you have any response to this fact sheet number three? Again, again, it's just misleading uh, facts, misleading bullet points. We are not talking about cases that have already been filed appropriately and are pending in a criminal court. Mm -hmm. We are specifically talking about a case where an individual is arrested and basically before the case is pending, what is being done on that case? And, and this district attorney's office failed. Nothing was being done on a lot of these cases. And I can tell you that from personal experience. You know, clients, you know, I get a phone call on a Monday. Hey, I was arrested Saturday uh, for domestic violence. Um, and, you know, we walk them through the process that your case is going to be in screening. Uh, and, and next thing you know, I, I have, you know, I have these clients that are out on bond and, you know, they can't go back home. They have to stay away from their families. And I'm getting calls, hey, what's going on with my case? Well, the district attorney has done nothing on the case. It's not in court. I can't make any arguments to judges right now. I can't make any arguments to prosecutors trying to get a deal for my client or, 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 or even, even get a, a, a dismissal. So these motions had to be filed um, because nothing was being done. And, and so the, and, and this type of dismissal is not a final dismissal. So yes, the district attorney's office does have the discretion as long as it's prior to the statute of limitations running to file the case. And, and again, that's, not, that's also not fair uh, to the accused because basically their lives are on hold while this case is pending. And to have a, a, a DA's office that's so flippant, so careless about 
about these individuals. Uh, that's why a change has to be made. Judge Penny Hamilton, Omar Carmona, thank you both for coming on the show. If you're watching ABC7 Extra still ahead, what would happen if Yvonne Rosales was suspended? We look at the state law and speak with a retired district judge. Stay with us. This weekend only at Ashley Home Store's Black Friday Early Access Sale. Buy one, get one half off. Buy this sofa, get the love seat half off. Friday through Monday only. Don't miss it. Only at Ashley Home Store. Black Friday starts now at Oscar Leaser's Hyundai of El Paso. But you can skip the line because these doorbuster deals last all month long. Save thousands with 0% financing plus no payment for 90 days on many 2023 Hyundais. That's right, on 2023s, which are already in stock today. That's no interest and no payments for 90 days. Or lease new Kona EVs. That's an all-electric crossover for $279 a month. Four new Santa Fe's for $289 a month. Black Friday starts now at Oscar Leaser's Hyundai of El Paso. Someone ran a red light to T-bone me. I really need help, but hiring an attorney may be complicated. No, it's not. I called the strong arm and they made it easy for me. They took care of everything. Dealing with the insurance company on your own can cost you a lot of money. When you call, our team of professionals will immediately start working on your case. I called the strong arm. That first call took just a few minutes and it got me over $62,000. If you got injured in a wreck, we can help. The strong arm makes it easy. 800 then all sevens. Think all senior care is the same? Think Bien Vivir. As El Paso's only all-inclusive senior health program, you can expect a community of friends, your own team of health care providers, a healthy nutrition program, and therapy that improves your quality of life. We can even fill your prescriptions, all under one roof and with no out-of-pocket costs. So enjoy your independence and leave your health care needs to us. It's not too good to be true. It's BMB Vid. Call us today. Don't miss Black Friday at Ashley Home Store. Finance your purchase and get holiday cash to use now. Get 0% interest for five years with no money down. Plus, holiday cash equal to your first three months payments. Ashley Home Store. Welcome back. We have about four months before the start of the trial. As we have said earlier in the show, state law says Yvonne Rosales could be suspended from her position pending that trial. There were questions that the, the suspension could have happened earlier this week at a scheduling hearing, but nothing happened at that meeting. So what would happen if she were suspended? A jury trial will decide whether or not District Attorney Yvonne Rosales keeps her office. That trial will begin in March. But what happens now that there is a pending trial? Texas law says Rosales could be suspended from her office. That decision would have to be made by the presiding judge, Tryon D. Lewis. He would then have to appoint a temporary replacement. Lewis is not providing any comments regarding the case. ABC7 spoke with retired El Paso District Judge Chris Antcliffe about the process. Whoever he appoints has to post a bond that is at least equal to the damages she might suffer if she were to win her position back following that trial. Damages such as her benefits and salary. Public records show Rosales gets paid almost $200,000 per year as the DA. She is still in office today and I am still very much concerned for the criminal justice system in El Paso. Omar Carmona, the El Paso attorney who filed the petition to remove Rosales from her position, wants her suspended now. And Cliff agrees. Everything seems to be going wrong in the district attorney's office. You, you, you can't, I've never before seen more than a thousand cases dismissed in two months. Rosales has no plans of going anywhere. She said in a statement on Tuesday night, quote, my loyalty and focus will remain on improving the criminal justice system and the DA's office as a whole, despite this political distraction, end quote. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dylan McKim, and this has been ABC7 Extra.